Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, you are now tuned in to the Prince of Investing coming at you guys live for the last episode of 2019. Can you believe that? I think this is what, year two or three? But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So guys and girls, it's been amazing 2019. As we know so far, as of December 5th, the stock market has risen about 27% overall throughout the year. Let's keep our fingers crossed. We still got a couple more weeks in 2019 uh, during this recording. But for, for the most, as you can see in the description box, this video is going to be about buying land online. Exactly. So the first thing is a lot of us live in a high cost area like Hawaii or maybe New York City or maybe a Los Angeles where purchasing pieces of land is extremely expensive and you really don't have a use for it, right? But the thing is with this episode, I'm going to talk about and I'm going to show you how you can look outside of your little small world. That's right. Our little small cities. You know, think about it. I was living there in Hawaii and also I was uh, visited all over the country, lived in all types of cities and things like that. I want you to look outside of your world and to say, hey, you know what? Land is very scarce in Hawaii. Or land is very scarce in my current city of Los Angeles or my current city of New York City or whatever the case may be. But what about land in places like Texas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, you know, places that where land is a little bit more abundant, right? And it goes back to that old saying, they're not making any more land, right? So sometimes I think it's the most undervalued asset that we look at, because when you break it down to the world of investing, it breaks down to three places. Either you're gonna invest into your business or someone else's business, you're gonna invest in the real estate, or you're going to invest into the stock market. That's pretty much everything boils down to, of course, you can say stocks, bonds, options, gold, commodities, but I kind of put it in stocks. With real estate, you can buy land. You could be buying multiple, multi-level units. You could be, you know, it's a plethora of things you can do inside of real estate. And when it goes down to the business world, it's also a plethora too. So when you look at it, you pretty much say, hey, I don't really have three options. The easiest one to get into is stocks. The second easiest one to get into, you, can, you know, maybe start your own business, but real estate is pretty easy too. So now... Let's talk about the reasons of why to buy land. When you evaluate some of the most wealthiest people in the world, they always have a combination of these three assets. They have some form of real estate, they have some form of stocks, and they're either involved in a business or they have started a business of some sort of themselves. Look at the top three richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, uh, Bill Gates of Microsoft, Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway. All of those guys, so in their portfolio, they have land, they have stocks, and they have some form of entrepreneurship or business, right? So am I, do I, do I have any desire to be the next richest man in the world? No. But on my small scale, I want to have my portfolio designed the same way, where I want a little bit of land, I want a little bit of stocks, and I want to start my own business or be invested into other businesses, right? So with that being said, we're going to talk about how to buy land online. First off, the reason why I say online, because a lot of us, like I said earlier, a lot of us live in high cost areas where land may cost, you know, nothing smaller than $100,000. But think about outside areas like the South Dakota, North Dakota, Louisiana, Alabama, where there's tons of land for sale online. Why is there so much land for sale? I mean, I can't 100% answer that. But in most cases, usually it's passed down. You know, say uh, mom and dad purchase a piece of land, they left it to the child, the child lives on the land, then the grandchildren, they don't live in the area anymore. So now the land becomes a burden because they're just paying taxes on it. So just looking to get rid of it. So there's no a, a plethora of reasons. Some people have too much land, they want to sell pieces of it. So there's tons of land online that's available. Now, why do I say search online? Online takes you out of your current area. I currently live in Denver, Colorado. I can, you know, thanks to the internet, I can look up online and find land anywhere else. I can find land that's available in Georgia, land that's available in California, land that's available in Texas. There's some land I've seen for $500, $1,000, $2,000, three, 
five, ten, or whatever the case may be. So that's why I say go to online because when you're searching for land in your close area, either you have a lot of time on your hands and you know someone, or you relied upon maybe a real estate agent, right? And we want to get into all of that. So now we talked about why to buy land. We kind of talked about how, but we're going to break it down into about four steps how to buy a land online. One, um, I'm not going to, uh, this video is unsponsored, so I'm not going to talk about a particular company that does it, but I'm going to talk about companies that um, do land online. For example, um, there are tons of companies, you know, from Zillow, all, all over the place. You can just search land for sale in Alabama, land for sale in Louisiana, right? You can put in your price range. Hey, I only have $5,000, I only have $10,000, whatever the case may be. Now, it will pull up the fine land online. Now, here's the, the disadvantages. I'm going to give you disadvantages throughout the video. The disadvantage is you got to know, is this land real? Is this person real? Is the person that's selling you the land real? All that other great stuff. But we're going to go exactly how to do that. So first, you find your price range. Let's say if I had $10,000 that I was looking to purchase land for. The first thing I would do is first I would find land that's available. Once that land, I find a land online that's available, all land is sent it to a courthouse, right? Sent it to a courthouse, meaning that the courthouse owns all the land. They have some type of records uh, or whatever the case may be saying who the landowner is. So second, boom, call the courthouse. You can ask the courthouse, hey, I'm looking to purchase this land on this blah, 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 blah. Is this land owned by a second person, right? And once, um, first you check that with the charge with the um, with the courthouse. Second, the you know, it's the third thing you can do is you can hire a closing attorney. You reach out to the person that's selling the land, and you say, "Hey, um, I want to purchase this land. I want to hire a closing attorney." That's one thing you can do. Now, the closing attorney job is to make sure you have the money on one end. They make sure you have the money on one end. They make sure the person has the land outright on the other end. Because the disadvantages are, one, does the person own the land? Two, does the land have any liens on it or hold, hold back taxes or anything crazy about it, right? You know, three, just because a person owned the land, does it, do they have the ability to sell? Meaning that if my dad left me, me and my brothers, a piece of land, do maybe I may not have the right to be able to sell all the land, maybe a piece. Do that person have the rights? So making sure the land is out clean, making sure there's no liens and anything crazy, and somebody trying to come at court, making sure you just don't get scammed because that's a, a bad thing that goes around everywhere, right? So now once you have uh once that that's what the closing attorney do. But I'm gonna teach you a trick at the end that you can get away or get around the closing attorney. So now I know, hey, the closing attorney, I paid them $5,000. You don't have to pay for deeds and fees and all of the good stuff like that. Um, they transfer the money to, to, the, um, to the landowner. The landowner transfers you the title, right? So now the title is in your name. The title is in your name. You can call the courthouse to verify your name is on the title. Once they verify the, land, the name is on your title, it's yours. And guess what? To know you own 100% to own the land, when they start to send you property taxes. If the courthouse is not reaching out to you to for property taxes, something's fishy. You don't own the land. That's the number one way to find out something is wrong. Because the courthouse, they're going to reach out to whoever name is really on the title because they want the money. Because that's a, a revenue stream for them. Land owners are the ones that pay for the school, the piping, the this, the that, the that, or whatever the case may be. Now, Prince, you said you was going to give us a trick to get around the closing attorney because sometimes closing attorneys can cost you 10 to 20% or whatever the transaction fee is. A way that I looked at it and the way that I was able to get around closing attorneys was good old credit card, right? What I mean by that, I would purchase the land on a credit card. And when I purchased the land on a credit card, I would tell the owner, you have 30 days to have the title to me with my name on the title, right? Once I get the title, once the title comes in to me, um, I will cross-reference the title with the courthouse. Once my name is on the court, once I know my name is on the, the title, we're good to go, right? If the reason why, why I say use a credit card, 
because I know that if something is fishy, come to mind two, three weeks later, I don't have the title or I have the title, but the title is not jiving right, then what I can easily do, I can easily call my financial institution to cancel payment, right? And in my contract or in my agreement, I will write that, hey, if I do not receive a clean title within 30 days, I will cancel. So they know, you shoot them an email, so you have it in black and white, the terms and conditions of you purchasing this particular land. So when you go to your financial institution and say, hey, something's fishy, I want out of this deal and I want my money back, I want to cancel payment, then, um, then you know, you have documentations and you have proof that what happened and why it happened, all the other great stuff. Now, the reason why I say 30 days, because most financial institutions, within 60 days on your credit card, you can dispute any charge, right? But check with your financial institution to verify, because if you have 10, 15, 20, 30 days to be able to, you know, let's say if you got only 30 days to dispute, if your financial institution tell you only have 30 days to dispute a transaction, you may want to tell your uh, the person you're buying the land from, you got two weeks. At the two weeks, cancel the transaction. I no longer want it. Then um, call your financial institution, cancel the payment, change your credit card information if you want to go that far, and then um, don't purchase the land. That way, you don't have to worry about, I won't say don't worry about, but it lowers the risk of somebody scheming you. Because really, the holding attorney, the holding attorney or the real estate holding attorney, all they're doing is just making sure, you know, bringing you a little comfort, making sure the paperwork is right, making sure the paperwork is right over here on this end. But the number one piece, if you're not getting taxes every year, they're not mailing you uh, tax invoices saying, hey, you owe property tax, then you don't own the land, right? Or something's very fishy. Or they maybe got the wrong address or something. So when I get a title to know a title is real, Every title comes from a courthouse. You can call that courthouse, and that courthouse has someone by the um, every every uh, every county or city or whatever. Every courthouse has a tax. I forgot what their name is. They're a tax, not accountant, but they are the tax. What I can't even think of it right now. They're the person that's pretty much pretty much making sure everybody pays their taxes, right? And they're going to pay taxes off of who's on file. If your name is not showing up, if the if the county county commissioner, I think it's the county commissioner, ta county tax commissioner, if the county tax commissioner is not saying, "Hey, Mr. Dykes, you owe us, you know, hundred dollars for property tax this year," most of the property tax you can pay online. If you can't go online, you don't see your name on it. Something's fishy. So that's a way. That's a quick workaway workaround. Now the thing about it is, Prince, why would I want to buy land? Land is an asset. You know, every month I know people that uh, they get paid or they earn their living, maybe it's wages, maybe through a business or whatnot, and they don't put their money anywhere that it can grow. I look at buying land is accumulating an asset. And by accumulating an asset, we are, uh, by accumulating assets, if you can start off with land, and the reason why I say land, land is very low maintenance. It doesn't cost much to manage land. Let's say, for a prime example, if you wanted to uh, run out, buy, buy an apartment or a duplex to rent out, you know, inside of that duplex, you have to worry about the appliances. You have to, you need legal to make sure somebody uh, pays you. It's very hard to evict somebody. Uh, you have all types of things you have to worry about uh, when you, with real estate. Real estate is, is very good. Land is very easy. Um, now I own a couple pieces of land. And to be honest with you, I've never seen the land. You know, I have no intentions of going to see it, right? But it's an asset. I can use it as collateral. I can pass it down to my son. I can go buy an RV and go live on it if I wanted to. So, um, and actually it has possibility of rising in value. So that's the idea of accumulating assets, right? Let's say to go buy a duplex, it may cost you a quarter million. It may cost you 300,000, maybe depending on where you're at in the, in the country. Versus you can buy land some places for, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars, right? Or maybe even six thousand dollars, sometimes ten, you know. So it's more affordable than having a what you call it, buying a piece of real estate, maybe like a multi-level duplex. Also, with the land, you actually can afford it. I actually own it. 
For prime example, I have enough money to be able to go get a loan for the duplex. And then if I have that duplex, I got to make sure people pay my rent. I got to make sure people don't tear up the place. I got to make sure the appliances are good. I have to make sure they're good tenants. What if somebody leaves? All, you know, make sure the doorknobs work, all this other great stuff, right? Versus with the land, I don't care. It's probably um, a bear family or a snake family or whatever that's living on my land right now. It's low maintenance. So it's very low maintenance. But then again, low maintenance, very low risk, low return. What I mean by low return, uh, seeing a piece of land produce a monthly income is probably not going to happen. Right, you know, seeing a piece of unless you're I've known some people who rip the land and they sell the hay, they sell the trees, they um uh, they sell the hay, some of them sell the trees, some of them make ranches, they use it to feed the cattle. I've heard all types of stories. Um, so I do hear people making monthly income, but for most people, if you went online today and by the end of um, the end of the year, if you close on a piece of land, the thing that's gonna be producing you something is pretty slim, you know. Unless you purchase some land that people are already paying rent on. I remember growing up as a child, my mom, we grew up in a trailer when I was, um, my mom and dad, when I was in my younger years, my mom and dad had a trailer. And his trailer was on someone else's land. So every month, my mom, the, the, the guy who owned the land would come around and I guess everybody would pay 60 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever the case may be. So they would pay him every single month until, you know, at that time, my parents was building a house, they built the house, and, well, they brought their own land first. Then probably about 10 years later, they built their own house on that land and, you know, whatever the case may be. But in my younger years, it was a guy that would come around, he had a piece of land and people lived on it. And by people living on it, they just paid rent. You know, they paid rent to live on the land. Maybe maybe 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars a month or whatever, but he came around and picked it that's a way to earn cash flow from land. Uh, so, and to be honest, if you can purchase land that is being rented by someone else, that's better than buying real estate, the, a, a house. Because so many times we get caught up on what's on the land than what's under the house. You know, because we can build a new house tomorrow, but we can't make new land. Because let's say if you own an RV uh, park, so I've seen some people purchase RV parks. And in that RV park, you know, people live on the RV park and they may pay a hundred bucks a month for power and electricity. That could be a way. And it's very low maintenance. You don't have to worry about windows breaking, appliances, uh, this happening. You know, if snow come, rain come, hey, it has nothing to do with you. But those are kind of the ways I want to talk about it. Uh, I, I would, this is something I wish I would have done very early in life, but I was very skeptical of it. I didn't know that much about it. And I thought, well, I have to go look at a piece of land and I have to talk to a land owner. I got a high real estate person. I live in a big city right now. Land is too expensive for me here in Honolulu. Land is too expensive for me in uh, Denver, Colorado or whatever city I, I'm in. I don't have time to be going out in the country trying to find land or whatever the case may be. And I learned one of the easier ways to do it is to use the internet. You know, the internet can tell you everything that you want to know. It's 2019 going into 2020. But hopefully that that uh, helps you out. Um, we, we talked about, you know, the purposes of buying land. We talked about some of the disadvantages of buying land. You know, the disadvantages of buying land, low profitability, um, low monthly, a low a cash flow, a low cash flow, low profitability, meaning that you, very rare you see land double itself, triple itself in value, depending where it's at. Low cash flow, meaning that the likelihood of somebody renting your land is pretty slim. Uh, by having a low cash flow, by having a low um, profitability, and number three, getting scammed. It's very easy to get scammed on land, figuring out who owns the land. Did someone give you a fake deed? Is this is is this right? You know, property tax. Are property taxes on on this? Is there a lien placed on this land? All this type of stuff. So, and then we talked about exactly how to do it. You know, looking up online. Once we find it online, we want to check out the courthouse, get a, a closing attorney, getting that deed in hand. 
getting that deed and that title to that land in hand and keeping up with those property taxes. Got to pay those property taxes. Uncle Sam's going to want his piece. But anyway, this is going to conclude my last episode of 2019. Um, it's been great. It's been fun. I think it's like year two or three or something like that at Think Tech Hawaii. Um, it's been amazing. And I will see you guys and girls in 2020 uh, next year. So before you go, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you check out the description box to check out all the great things here at Think Tech Hawaii and also at the Investor Show. And always, until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe. Peace, be safe. I'm out, and thank you. Thank you.